Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Mumbai Abhyan, we welcome the media and our team. This is uh, the third press conference in the series of uh, the issues which we have uh, begun. Uh, we finished with the coastal road next to the metro, and today is uh, again a very important issue of uh, RA. Uh, which uh, Abhyan is uh, very active on uh, protesting against the metro shed in uh, Ayat. We have three uh, uh, senior people who have really worked very hard on the uh, issue of Ayat. We have Stalin, we have Priya Mishra and Manish Bhaiya. Stalin and Priya are from the Ayat Conservation Group and Manish is from Sevare uh, community. So I request um, Stalin to start the brief, and then Priya and then Manish. Good evening, friends uh, from the media. Thank you for taking time out and coming here, uh, supporting us. Without the media, we wouldn't be there we are today. The RA, whatever freezer RA has got in the eyes of the government, <coughs> Public domain only follow the press. We thank you for the support. On the onset, I would always, I would once again reiterate that we are not against the metro car shed, metro project. We are only opposing the location of the metro car shed inside our economy. So this constant allegations which are coming to our ears is that we are holding up the project, which is a lie, which will be evident by the time we clear we run to this program. Our arguments in favor of RA and why RA should not be the destination for this metro car shed will be elaborated soon. To start with, RA is the only open space available, the large open space which is available for all the citizens of this city of Mumbai. And the best part is that you can access it without paying any money. It's a natural area, rich forest, and a wonderful place, especially in this killing heat. Because of its virtues as a forest and because of its contiguity with the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, it becomes a very ecologically sensitive area besides the fact that it is a forest. It forms part of the eco-sensitive zone which was mandated to be maintained around the national parks. The Supreme Court in 2006 had directed all the states of India to demarcate the ecologically sensitive zones against around the national parks and sanctuaries. And Maharashtra state kept dragging its feet. And that is the result that finally the gaze of the developers landed up at RA. Uh, we raised this issue with the Honorable National Green Tribunal, uh, which has seen merit in our case and maintained our petition, and it is being heard. The aspects of RA which are of vital importance, first of all, the presence of wildlife. Uh, before I continue, uh, can I have uh, a raise of hands? Which are from the Marathi and Hindi media? How many from the Marathi media? Okay, so I'll, I'll try and speak in between also Marathi and please feel comfortable to ask me questions. Uh, so this uh, is important in the case of wildlife. Inside RA, there is about, we have officially recorded about nine leopards. And nine leopards, cats don't, uh, are very territorial. The fact that nine leopards are surviving inside RA, we are not talking of the 35 or 38 leopards inside uh, the national park, we are talking of nine leopards which have made RA their home. And they have managed to live silently alongside human settlements in that area. So the presence of wildlife and countless other flora and fauna, among which the Indian rock python and endangered birds. There's a lot of biodiversity in RA. Even there are endemic species. Endemism means it is found only there and nowhere else in the world. So it becomes a biodiverse, biodiversity rich area which needs to be protected. Now because of RA, a lot of water security is provided to our city. The water table in RA is the highest in Mumbai and you get pure water there. It's the catchment area of the Mithya River. 
it helps in flood control and percolates into the ground and thereby recharging the groundwater facilities. Even in this killing heat, if you walk into RA, you will find that you are starting to breathe yourself on your own and your breathing is more deep and very recharging. That's because of the purification effect. It's like the green lung, it's like you can call it, it purifies the air. It's a natural air purifier. It, all in all, it's a place where you can get a respite from this heat and get fresh air and be with nature. It has tremendous tourist potential. And surprisingly, when we started this campaign, we thought that we knew much about RA and there were only two lakh trees in RA. But we were proved wrong when the BMC, the MCGM went about doing its survey. Uh, it said about five lakh trees and still counting. So, after we brought all these things to light, uh, two things happened. In 2013, the MOEF, the Ministry of Environment and Forest, had said that if the eco-sensitive zone proposals are not submitted, a 10 kilometer buffer zone would be applied around National Park. So, on the last day of the submission of proposals, the Maharashtra government rushed and sent in a proposal to the central government. And that proposal involved half of RA and a lot of conditions which, uh, which ensured that RA would remain inviolate and free from unplanned exploitation or construction. A lot of restricted activities were there. After we went to the National Green Tribunal, the, Mar the Maharashtra government went ahead and submitted another proposal in addition or in replacement to what was sent earlier. This new proposal very generously said that entire RA will be protected. But when you read to the proposal, it very clearly says that all activities permitted by MCGM would be allowed there. So MCGM has a very great record in protecting the city, so we would not want to dis discuss on that further. Now MMRDA or uh, MMRCL, I have, sometimes I, this confusion comes up, uh, why MMRCL? We are not saying MMRC because MMRC itself doesn't have a proper office. The last time we went to collect an RTI, we had to go to three different buildings in MMRA, MMRDA. Because they themselves said that we keep shifting our offices every, almost every month. So MMRCL uh, came out some, some arguments using the press uh, to create confusion among the minds of the common people. Among which, it was said that relocating the depot would affect the progress of the work and it would lead in cost increase. They themselves have deviated from their original proposal to build the car shed at Kalina and shifted it to RA. Now, technically, they call it the Kolaba Seeds Metro, but they have clandestinely introduced another aspect. They have extended the line from Seeds to, to inside RA and created a station inside RA. So ideally, they should come honestly and say, this is a Seeds RA Metro. The purpose of locating a metro station inside its forest where hardly anyone lives is questionable. We have opposed that. The cost increase argument doesn't work because of the delay in issuing contracts and the delays in other uh, getting clearances from other departments has already shot up the project cost by almost 3,000 to 5,000 crores by the admissions of MMRC. Now, another statement which has been doing the rounds over the last three months is that only 500 trees or less than 500 trees will be affected. So we were sort of very intrigued that how can this be? If you have occupied the space and there are 2,400 trees, then how are you saying? Fakta paatshe jhaad zhaana. Fakta paatshe kasa haa prashna padla amala. So I mean, there's a Taukash Kela amala samar la ki 1,000 trees je manta hai, se Transplant होना आणि 1000 जी आहे ते एक्झॉटिक आहे म्हणजे ते काढून टाका आपल्याला जेव्हा सावली लागतं आपण जाऊन काय बघतो का एक्झॉटिक झालं तर सावली मध्ये आम्ही उभा राहणार नाही असं आपण बोलत नाही ना सो समहाऊ दी गव्हर्नमेंट हॅज डिसाइडेड की एक्झॉटिक ट्रीज कॅन बी गिव्हन डन अवे दीस ट्रीज वर प्लांटेड बाय द गव्हर्नमेंट थमसेल्स अँड टुडे फॉर कन्व्हिनियन्स दे हॅव बीन इग्नोर्ड सो 1000 एंड 1000 2000 जस्ट गॉन अवे नो रिमेनिंग 350 कॅन नॉट बी सो दैट विल बी कट this is rubbish. The entire 2,500 trees are going to go and the landscape will be irreparably changed. Now, transplantations are very uh, good examples of how it should not be done. If you come into RA, you can see that plenty of trees which have been transplanted 
94 percent of them have died, have died. And there is no question or there is no even talk of how to replace them. So we don't buy the argument about the transplantation. And it is a lie. Now different, it's just like the child getting up and saying in the morning, I want one chocolate or five chocolates. The MMRC has been behaving like that. They first said they wanted 30 hectares. Then they flip flop to 20 hectares. They went to the extent of filing an affidavit. An affidavit is a sworn statement on in the law. And they have given a sworn statement saying that only 20 hectares is needed for a double decker car depot. And less trees will be affected. So now coming back from that double decker car depot, they came back and said, no, no 30, 30 is not enough. Now we want 35. And some in the last the report, it, it has gone up to 62 hectares. So they themselves are not clear what they want. And there is no document, there is no study, nothing has been done. For this project, they need to consult the people which they have never done. Now, they have plans to expand this. They have said that this metro shed in RA will not be enough. So this will be used only for 15 years. So our question is why permanently damage a forest if you are not going to remain there permanently. MMRC's own admission is that they want this land only for 15 years. But on the other side, they also say that we are bringing it into RA because there is scope for expansion. Now, there is no clarity, there is no honesty, there is no document which says that, okay, this is the plan and this is what they are going to do. Now, we have been always maintaining that the Kanjurmang is the best site for the metro because it provides enough space for an integrated metro center or transport center, even your PST depots, your uh, metro lines, all the control centers and the yards and the sheds and whatever you name it have, can come up there because those lands have much lesser or negligible ecological value as of now because the salt pans on which they are trying to be, again because the question will come to how are we accepting this of salt pans. The salt pans which we have accepted or suggested or even requested to be suggested are those which have been dried up over the last 10 years and there is no sea water reaching those land, the entire ecological character of that land has been changed. So this is the present status as of today. There is no, in fact, the uh, MMRC has been in continuous denial about the wildlife. They say, they say that it is a wasteland. They have come on affidavit saying that it is government wasteland. So we cannot accept this argument that an area with five lakh trees, nine leopards and endemic species can be anything but a forest or an ecologically sensitive zone. How this zone got neglected and how it can add value to the city will be explained later uh, by Manish. And uh, as far as the alternatives go, so now it, it, it should not, we never take a confronting position unless we have alternatives. We have given them very viable alternatives which can be easily implemented with the least damage. It's a question of dialogue. The sad part is that the government or the MMRCL or anyone else have, have not made any attempt or have not responded to our repeated att attempts to contact them. It's a citizen's movement. What are we asking? We have democratic, our democratic rights to talk to the government. Sadly, we see all this loss from the MMRCL and also the state government. Without getting permissions for cutting trees and and uh, whatever compensatory afforestation or whatever has to be, there is a lot of procedures which are involved. And this city has already lost enough trees so that we should not be being party to more tree felling. That's what we are saying. I now hand over uh, this mic to Priya so that she can explain to you about the alternatives which were put forth by us. Thank you. Hello, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the alternatives. Uh, not just proposed by us, but by uh, the report itself. Now, initially in 2011, uh, the project report for the Metro 3 came out. Now, in the section on the depot, uh, they had a few parameters based on which they decided they finalized the uh, depot location. These were the size, the alignment, uh, where the site was uh, located next to the road. So uh, then they had a clause which said that the depot has to be at the terminal end. I'll come back to that. Then the question of ownership and the current status, what was there at the site, was it freely available or not. Uh, there were four options suggested in the project report. The first was DKC, then race course, 
the first tabling area of this course, Kalina and Are. Now, Kalina and Are were shortlisted, and based on these very parameters, uh, Kalina was the best option. The only reason why RA was selected was on the basis of size. They said RA had 34.3 hectares, Kalina had 20, and they needed 25 for the depot, so they finalized RA. They said the others, BKC is too expensive, it's a very big piece of real estate, we cannot afford to give that away. Uh, race course again, uh, the whole uh, Mahalakshmi race course is going to be affected if we remove the staging yards. Now, uh, there were no surveys conducted. When you think a project of this scale, you would have surveyors going to the sites, doing maps, doing drawings, and then calculating the areas. But when we filed an RTI to get those drawings, uh, they said, no, we never did that. So map, uh, the area was calculated just on the basis of online maps on Google. So we went and did uh, the mapping ourselves. And what we discovered was very shocking. RDA was not 34.3 hectares, it was only 27. So figure had been hiked up. And Kalina, which was mentioned as 20 hectares, was actually 26 hectares. So if they had mentioned the two figures, then there was no, you know, there was no debate. Kalina was the obvious and only choice for the metro. Coming to the alignment, now Seeds was the last station. To get to RA, they have to extend the line 1.2 kilometers. That's an additional cost. But at Kalina, the station is right next to the plot. So again, that justifies Kalina as being the site. Now, after uh, citizens, when they discovered that RA was going to be built on and they were going to cut the trees, when they protested, the uh, chief minister set up a committee. Now, members of the RA movement went and met the committee. We, on our own, did some research and we suggested three other alternatives, which was that way. Uh, the Mumbai Fortress Ranch and Chanjur Mark. Now, based on all these seven uh, alternatives, after eight months, the committee came up and said that uh, we will try and take the depot to Chanjur Mark. We recommend that. The environmental experts on the uh, committee, they said that the uh, RA should not be touched at all. They said there is wildlife, there will be a loss of biodiversity, there is a threat of flooding. So we don't recommend RA at all. You please either take it to Kajimot or the second option should be back to. So that was completely ignored. And uh, when they said we will uh, try and take it to Kajimot, they put a rider that if this plot is made available to us within three months, we will take it to Kajimot, otherwise we we'll come back to RA. And if we do build the uh, major depot at Kajimot, we will still need RA to, uh, for a staking line, which is basically to park our trade. Oh, now, where this three month figure came from, we don't know. It is, maybe it is just uh, on paper that to show the public that we have done something, just to you know, keep them at base with their paper. Uh, so, basically, that is the gist of it. The other options, uh, when they said back pay, we cannot consider because it will involve reformation, which will be expensive and will take time. Uh, accepted. But then we were shocked to find out that in the DP they are proposing the same thing. They are going to be reclaiming that, spending that amount of money for a central park. Central park at the end of conflict. It doesn't make sense at all. Whereas you are destroying RA, which is centrally located, looking at the map of our uh, Mumbai right And you destroy that and you take a central park right to the south end of Mumbai. The BKC again, like I said, uh, that, uh, they said it's a expensive piece of real estate, we have a lot of exercise, we will be selling that land, you know, to generate funds for our own projects. But now we hear that that is going to be given for the bullet train terminals. So what is not acceptable for uh, the Metro 3 depot is acceptable for the bullet train. Uh, so we demand that these be looked at. You have very obvious choices. You, you know, you pretend that it doesn't exist. You are willing to ignore it. We are willing to consider options which will involve a lot of money and which don't make sense. But uh, we are here to say that uh, please go back to your original options. These are not something we suggested, Karina was suggested for you yourself. That means it was viable. So please go back to that. And Kajimak again, uh, the excuses which they say that will uh, cost money, 7 kilometers extension will cost. We are saying that they are already proposing the Metro 6 route from Jogeshwari to Kajimak. So it is not an expense. It's, it is an investment and that uh, the Hawaii population doesn't have access to a rail network. So that should again be a priority. And anyway, the council mark plot 
is being uh, designated for that line's depot. So you combine both lines and have the same depot. So you again saving costs on that. Now I'll uh, give the mic to Manish. Uh, he'll be talking about uh, what RA can be, what our short term suggestions are. And once he finishes, we've got a few pictures of these alternative sites. We'll just show that to you. So, over to you, Manish. Hello. These are some of the sites which we have photographed. One option which uh, Priya missed the evening is the Mumbai Port Trust Plan. This is another option of Paravi, but it could be a long time consuming process, so we have not gone into it presently. This is the Kalina side. This is the best site, but somehow it uh, has high real estate value. So it's not being considered. This is the consumer, the actual photograph of the site. The grass that you see here is which grown by diverting the sewage water from the slums nearby. And it is a completely dry and hard patch. So I'll hand over the mic to Manish who will take it to the Virtues of I and the positive potential of I. Uh, thank you, Stalin. Uh, thank you, to the, thank you to the team of Apna Mumbai Ambyan for giving various citizen groups the opportunity to voice their concerns. Uh, when we started, we met with a lot of people, I and mean, a lot of people went and joined our movement as we went. Uh, government. Uh, uh, you know, there were people who labelled us that, okay, this is a society-specific movement which wants to protect the interest of Borega Malahe Borebri. Uh, we had people from Bandra, we had people from George Wade, we had people from Canada, UK, everyone supporting us. They've been coming and giving us suggestions as to what RA can be. If no metro yard, no GMLR, then what? Government says it's a wasteland. Can, is it a wasteland? So we've assimilated all those uh, uh, suggestions from us, from everyone, and uh, in a short slide, I'm going to just uh, uh, show everything to you. So, government wants, uh, I think the last week we talked about a BKC2 in RA, government wants Zoom in RA, GMLR in RA, government wants to use it for SRA for a lot of other things, not just metro shit. But what RA can be, okay, it can be a world class fitness hub, it can be a world class natural area for biodiversity education. It can be a world-class children picnic spot. It can be a world-class open and community area. And the last slide I'm going to talk about, it can be a showcase for a successful cycling track. One track has failed in BKC, but I'm going to show you this, uh, the potential of RA for a cycling track. Okay, so in a nutshell, it can be, as Stalin spoke about, a beautiful, probably a world-class open space for the city of Mumbai, keeping all the trees intact. The suggestion that we will be touching upon does not hamper any of the trees. So we're going to change the meaning of development. Development is not just flyover or a metro yard or uh, multiple levels of flyover. Development means a good open space for the city of Mumbai as well. So uh, just a quick slide to start with. Uh, we all know uh, the movement started about seven years ago. 
Today we are at Logger Hats on Metro Yard. Seven years back, we were on the Force One Commando Base, which has been set up in RA. RA lost 98 acres that time. Okay, since the time we have started, uh, various people, as I said, have joined in. It is one of the most innovative campaigns for environment. Uh, the right one, the Save RA, uh, was developed by Greenline, one of the associate NGOs. We have sent 600 of these to various government authorities. We have went in RA, picked up leaves, made rakis or rakis of it, and have dispatched 100 rakis, including chief minister. Okay, on the left hand side, it's not just protest, it's constructive protest, legal. We've been doing a lot of good things for RA as well. Right from cleanliness side, right from cleanliness perspective to beautifying RA. So to start with, I talked about how RA can be a world-class fitness app. Okay. Have open air yoga centers there. Give the places in RA or centers like karate, skating, jogging camps. Okay, there are beautiful mountains inside RA. Develop hiking trails there. You know, give it for rock climbing adventure camps. Have a camping zone set up in RA. You have one in National Park. If you go in the morning at 7 o'clock in the National Park, it does not look like a National Park. It looks like any other fitness center. It's a National Park. It's Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So can RA be used to take some load and give animals in National Park that respite? RA can be a beautiful opportunity there. Uh, the second point is RA can be a world-class cultural hub. Uh, we, uh, about a couple of months back, did something called as Art for RA. By the way, this is the RA CEO painting with us a dilapidated building in RML colony. Okay, we got together 20 artists across Bombay, the best of artists, and we painted, started painting there. They got an opportunity to display their art. There are various centers inside RA which are to be found. There are amphitheaters surrounded by trees. As against having your concerts in banquet halls or uh, close surroundings, why can't you have it? Subject to obvious the environment norms and low carbon footprint. There is an RA garden, uh, garden restaurant which has the potential to be a beautiful butterfly park. There's a New Zealand hostel inside which has got a beautiful auditorium surrounded by trees. So, as against the mall culture, why can't we unmall it using RA? Okay, we talked about uh, world-class picnic spots. Uh, I remember in my school, every year I used to come to RA. I don't recollect any schools going to RA as a picnic spot. The picnic spot is completely degraded. With one of our NGOs, we have started something called as a Me and My Green Teacher program where students can go inside RA, have classrooms inside RA. So three to four hours they learn about environment and drawings and all inside RA. Okay, so the real mall culture we talked about. RA has more than 75 species of birds. Why not give it for birding trails? Even the best place for birding in Bombay is no more existent. Why can't RA uh, stack up there? Uh, there are multiple lakes in RA, natural as well as artificial. Okay, they all are in dire needs of cleanliness. Okay, we have done more than 10 cleanliness drives in RA, but drives will not help. You need a permanent solution for making RA a world-class open space. Have green camps. We've done something like a green film fest. It was very successful last year. So why not develop RA from that perspective? Uh, uh, another NGO did something called as a photothon. So let like-minded people come there and use that RA as an open space for their own development. Photographers can give them and uh, have photothons conducted. By the way, if you want to click a photograph in RA, you need a special permission. Okay, so you, all the photographs that you take in RA probably may be illegal. Okay, in you have got tribal settlements inside RA. They've got a unique history. So already an NGO conducts a lot of tribal walks and a lot of tribal lunches there. Why can't RA be used from that perspective? give uh, opportunity for exhibits inside RA. All this would lead to employment in RA. Okay, so this is the last slide which I was talking about RA as a potential for cycling track. The blue arrows is the RA main road. Okay, the red arrows are the internal roads where movement of vehicles is banned. Okay, so there's less of movement of vehicles. You need not do anything, just have proper speed breakers. The All the interior roads can be used to have us, uh, you know, for cyclists who wants to travel from Goregaon to Hawaii. A very, very busy uh, uh, business sector, around 10,000 vehicles fly between these roads, so why not use it, that alternate road for a sector? Obviously, this requires subject to proper feasibility study and all. To sum it up, uh, we had done a leopard contest, a photography contest last year, this is the result of it. Live and let live, it's, ours is not just ours. 
RA is uh, belonging to wildlife as well. Uh, please uh, live and let us give some space to wildlife as well for living. Thank you so much. Chief Minister's committee also. So that is one aspect which the 
MMR cell has to do, break all the sites on the same plane. Let us evaluate what is there. See, ultimately the car shot will have to come up somewhere. We cannot keep pushing it from one place to another. But like I said, the always we have to see which is the least destructive option. Then we will take it follow. Yeah, the metro uh, seven line, which is from the eastern Kandheri East. Now, just a week back, there was a report, I think, of the press release, which said they're planning to extend it up to the T2 terminal, airport terminal, and the metro three will also be passing through that. Now, our question is, when you already have both these lines coming there, why don't you integrate it? Why don't you merge it? Is it just you know taking it up to seats? That's also a problem of north-south connectivity. No person get, coming from Delhi sir doesn't get, have to get off at uh, airport and then board another train. So your purpose of uh, you know uh, you know, continuity is gone. So then you take the depot to uh, the airport authority of India, which is the metro seven. Because of the Technical feasibility and it is an impact so I said uh study I think MMR still serve it. I mean I'm sorry. No. 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 NGT का definitely role है, NGT is already looking into the matter, मैं जो NGT का परवांगी शुआ है, कुटे ही सने फाइट करता है ना ना है, Royal Farm पर इस वाला करता है ना, NGT का role परवांग सवाग मार्च वाला राइड है, चाहे मंदिर, अन्य माय मैटर सब जुड़ी दस्ता ना आपन, मैं टिप्पणी करने से वाला पीस आता है ना मंदिर। Thank you so, that's it, thank you, thank you very much.